In this movie, I'll introduce you to transform sequences, which are duplicates that you can create within the context of a transform effect. And I'll also introduce you to another dynamic effect called convert to shape. And along the way, we'll create this atomic symbol. And believe it or not, if I press control Y or command Y on the Mac, it's nothing more than an ellipse. Everything else that we're seeing here is a function of the appearance panel. So the first thing I'll do is go up to the file menu and choose new from template, or I can take advantage of that keyboard shortcut of control shift N or command shift N on the Mac. Then I'll locate my center guides document and double click on it. All right, now I'll go ahead and select my ellipse tool from the shape tool flyout menu. And as you may recall, way back in chapter 11 of the fundamentals course, I changed the keyboard shortcut for this tool to shift M. All right, now I'll alt click or option click at the intersection of those two guidelines. And I'll change the width value to 180 points and the height value to 640, after which point I'll click OK in order to create that ellipse. And I'll go ahead and take the line weight value up to 10 points, like so. And I'm going to change the fill from white to black. So we have an entirely black ellipse at this point. All right, now I'll press the V key to switch back to the black arrow tool. And I'll turn off the guides layer here inside the layers panel. And then I'll switch over to the appearance panel, which of course you can get by choosing appearance from the window menu. All right, the first thing I want to do is make my fill smaller. So I'm going to scale that fill independently of the stroke. But I'm not going to do so using a transform effect just because that would be too much work. Instead, I'll go ahead and click on the fill to select it. And then I'll drop down to the FX icon, choose convert to shape and choose ellipse. And I know that seems so weird. Why in the world am I going to convert one ellipse to another? Well, really what I'm going to do is convert an ellipse to an absolute circle by choosing this command. And then as opposed to scaling this shape relative to its current size, I'll select absolute. And then I will change the width and height values each to 64 points like so. And that's going to give me a very precise circle in the center of the shape after which point I'll click OK in order to accept that change. All right, now I'll click on a stroke in order to make it active, and then I'll drop down to the FX icon once again, choose Distort and Transform, and choose Transform in order to bring up the Transform dialog box. And I know I want three copies of this shape, and as you may know, 360 degrees describes an entire circle. And so I'll go ahead and enter 360 followed by slash 3, in order to divide that value by three, and that gives me 120 degrees. And as you can see, if I turn on the preview checkbox, I do indeed rotate the shape 120 degrees about its center. And that's a function of this little reference point matrix right there. If I were to select a different point, then I would rotate the shape by one of the corners or the sides, and that ends up taking it outside of my field of view right now. So I'll go ahead and click on the center point once again to bring it back on screen. Now, if I were to click OK, then I would just go ahead and virtually rotate this shape, which really doesn't serve me any purpose because I actually need three copies in all. So what I'm going to do is twirl open that stroke so I can see the word transform. I'll click on it in order to bring up that transform effect once again, complete with an angle value of 120 degrees. I'll turn on the preview checkbox, and then I'll click in this copies field. And I'll press the up arrow key. And you can see, just by raising the copies to one, I bring back the original ellipse. And now if I press the up arrow key again, I get a second copy, meaning that I have two copies along with one original, so three versions of the ellipse in all. At which point, I'll click OK to accept that change. All right, so that's pretty amazing, but it leaves us shy of three electrons, which is why I'll show you how we go about making those in the very next movie.